Hello, I'm Master Instructor Anthony Beeler, and today I want to talk to you about position play. One of the most common questions that I get asked by students is how to play the patterns correctly. Well, today I'm going to show you five strategies that professional players use. I'm also going to show you a drill that will enhance your ability to recognize patterns on the pool table. So let's go to the table and see what that looks like. The drill that I'm going to talk to you about today is called the brainwash drill. And like I said before, the brainwash drill has been around for years. There's been some changes to the drill in the past few years. Originally in the 60s and 70s, uh, the players would just spread 15 balls randomly anywhere on the table. And the rules to the drill are you have to pocket all the balls. You can't touch the cue ball with another ball other than the one you're trying to pocket. And you can't hit a cushion. So if you hit a cushion or you hit another ball with the cue ball, then you have to start the drill over. And so this drill focuses on full ball hits and three quarter ball hits. And that's a lot different uh, than lesson number nine where that we talked about the half ball hit, the most important shot in pool. This drill teaches you how to float the cue ball around the table without striking a cushion. And that's very, very important. So our first strategy that we're gonna be looking at today is always focus on full and three quarter ball hits. You're going to want to keep things as simple as possible. If you have position, there's no need to play position. So for example, I start off with ball in hand here. What I mean by keep it simple is, I can shoot the 12 and stop, and then I've got a stop shot on the 13, after I make the 13, then I can play for position on the set. And that's another stop shot. Uh, so you're really wanting to keep things simple, just like connect the dots. Uh, if you play the patterns correctly, you really don't have to move the cue ball much at all. Another thing that I want you to start thinking about is when you're playing position, you have to always stay on the correct side of the object ball. So, for example, if uh, I wanted to play position on the 13 ball in the side pocket, I've got to be sure that my cue ball here, if I'm shooting the 12, has a cut to the right because if I'm cutting the 12 to the right, then the cue ball is going to go to the left. If I was on the wrong side of the ball and I had a cut to the left, then my cue ball is going to go to the right. There's no way that I can play for position on the uh, 13 ball there. So that's another important element uh, as far as patterns go. Another thing that comes to mind is the importance of the alternative shot. Now what do I mean by the alternative shot? Well the alternative shot is where that you play position into a group of balls. You're not just playing for one specific ball. I mean you might be playing for that one ball, but if you don't get perfect on it, you've got another option. So if you're playing an eight ball, if you're playing straight pool, you don't have to shoot uh, one specific ball. And so if you give yourself alternatives, then that's gonna help make you more successful. I see a lot of eight ball players out there that are dead set on just one ball. And that's okay sometimes. But there are times where you need to play into a group of balls. And at that point, you're really just gonna choose the best one that you can or the, one, the ball that you fall on the best and uh, continue to run from there. The last thing I wanna talk about is the importance of the key ball. 
So if, if I'm playing in a game of eight ball, key balls are very important. And say all these balls were gone except for the 10 and the eight. Well, my, my 10 would be my key ball. So in other words, I might play for a straight in shot in the corner on the 10, knowing that if I stop, I've got a straight in shot on the eight. The reason that this is a key ball is because by the time you get down to your very last ball, there's no alternatives to play to. And so this ball is very important in finishing up the drill. And that'll make sense as uh, you try to execute this more and more. Uh, most people have a very difficult time with this at first. But what I want you to be aware of is the more that you do it, the better you're gonna get at it. And the reason this is called the brainwash is because when you're practicing this, I don't want you to practice any other drill for three weeks. You're gonna practice this drill an hour a day, three days a week, for three weeks, and your pattern play will improve immensely if you buy into this. So what I'm gonna do now is, uh, I'm going to uh, take cue ball in hand, and I'm going to see if I can correctly demonstrate how to run the brainwash through. I'm going to take ball in hand now and see if I can uh, successfully execute the brainwash drill. And the drill that I'm doing today is the modern day version. It has three rows of five balls each. If this drill gets a little easy for you down the line, then you can add another row of three balls down here and another row up there for a total of uh, 21 balls all together. But uh, if you work on this drill, it's really gonna improve your pattern, pattern play. So uh, first concept we're gonna look at is keep it simple. I'm just gonna play for stop shots. I'm gonna connect the dots. It'll be uh, shoot the three, stop the cue ball, play for the five, stop the cue ball, play for the one, stop the cue ball. So I'm always thinking ahead and I'm always playing for straight in shots or nearly straight in shots, which will be like a three quarter ball hit. Notice that this is a finesse game, not a, uh, a power type of a, a drill. Uh, I'm always wanting to maintain control of the cue ball. Another thing you're going to notice here is uh, I've got straight in on the one, and uh, I'm just going to float over just a little bit, just a, maybe an inch. And really it will depend uh, on what angle that I get as to which ball that I shoot next. So I'm going to kind of float in the middle and then look at all the balls and then determine from there what I decide to shoot next. Okay. So now it looks like I've landed pretty good on two balls. I've landed good on the 12 and I've landed good on the 14. I've landed a little bit better on the 12 than the 14. So what I'm probably gonna do is shoot the 12, stop, shoot the nine, and then I'm gonna uh, stop and then play for the four, and then the seven. I I'm seeing the connect the dots here, and, uh, and you'll see them too. It's uh, stop, stop, now on this one I can't just stop dead. Remember another principle to this is you always have to stay on the correct side of the ball. So I don't want to stop dead and then have the angle to where the cue ball is going to my right. 
I'd rather follow forward a little bit and then have the up angle so I can go up table here and be able to uh, have more choices. So uh, let's see if I can execute that. This is almost a stop shot, just a couple inches forward. Okay, you can see that there. So now I've landed really nice here. I can shoot and stop on the seven. And then I should have the 10 next. And then I've got a shoot and stop on the 10 and I'll have the 15 next. And then I can shoot and stop and play for the two. And then probably the six will be next. But I'm always thinking ahead. I'm being meticulous with whatever that I do. And you'll notice that I'm pinching and squeezing a lot. I'm just moving the cue ball an inch here or an inch there. But I'm I'm really keeping tight control over the cue ball in this one. In fact, in this one, what I may do is just shoot and stop and play the 11 next. Okay, that's dead perfect, so I've got another straight in shot here. And, uh, starting to get a little bit trickier now. I've really got to play all this right. On this shot, I've got to be sure I stay on the correct side of the six. I've got to be down here on this side of it, not on this side of it. So I'm wanting to still maintain a three quarter ball to full hit on the six, but I want to be sure that I'm down here. That way that uh, I can float forward and, uh, and fall into an alternative shot situation. Okay. Now, I've landed pretty good here on the six. And uh, from here, I'm going to roll forward just a little bit here. If I can pinch it over a couple of inches, then I've got my 14, and my 14 will be my key ball. I've got to really land right on the 14 uh, so I can get out and make the eight ball last here. Because if I don't, then uh, I'm going to wind up hitting a cushion. So I've got to maintain really good control and be sure that I get on the 14 because once I get on the 14, there's no alternatives to fall onto. The eight ball will definitely be the last shot here. So. Okay. Did I fall good on my key ball? Felt pretty good on it. What I'm gonna do now is, just draw back a couple of inches. And now I'm down to the eight ball here. And uh, on this shot, just wanna be sure I take some extra time here I've got close to uh, a uh, half ball hit here, which is something you really don't want to do. But the good news is, is that the eight ball's out in the middle of the table and I can put some draw on it and slow the cue ball down and hopefully successfully uh, execute this drill.
that was successful completion of the brainwash drill. As you can see, the brainwash drill is a powerful position playing strategy that professionals have used for years. Practice this drill. Practice it for an hour a day, three days per week, for around three weeks, and the patterns will start to jump out at you. You won't have to guess which ball to shoot next. It will already be embedded into your game. Practice the five position playing strategies that we discussed during the lesson. And if you can embrace those strategies during your matches, your runs will be much higher than ever before and you'll win matches that you never thought were possible to win.